While Yellowstone's Valide, another major danger lurks. The superheated groundwater there could erupt with the force of an atomic bomb. Yellowstone National Park is known for its bubbling hot springs and steaming geysers. This hydrothermal wonderland is powered by a cauldron of partially molten rock deep underground. It holds enough boiling magma to build several Mount Everests. Yellowstone's last eruption was 70,000 years ago. If it were to erupt again, vast areas could be buried under lava. Most scientists think that's unlikely, at least for the next few thousand years. But there's another serious danger lurking, one that's more sudden and dangerous than lava. To understand its destructive power, it helps to remember what happened a decade ago on Japan's Mount Antic. The weather was clear with a gentle breeze. At 11.52 a.m., more than 100 climbers stood on the summit, enjoying snacks and taking pictures. Then trouble struck, and it came without warning. The windows of a nearby hut suddenly shook. The windows shook violently from a shock wave too low for human ears to hear. Then a huge gray cloud billowed from the southwest slope of the mountain. It swept over the summit, blinding people in a swirl of dust. They couldn't see as millions of tons of rock and dust, thrown from the mountain, rained down on them. Sixty-three people died, most were killed by falling debris. This volcanic eruption wasn't caused by lava or fire. It was powered by water. A pool of underground water suddenly heated up, probably by volcanic gas or magma rising from below. The water boiled into steam almost instantly. As this happened, the water expanded hundreds of times its original volume. It shattered the mountainside, sending rocks flying into the air. This type of steam eruption is called a phreatic, phreatic, eruption. It's triggered by a sudden pulse of heat inside an active volcano. But similar plumes of steam, called hydrothermal vents, can also erupt far from active volcanoes. Yellowstone is pockmarked with craters left by these eruptions. There have probably been thousands of them over the past 14,000 years. That includes one massive eruption on July 23rd, it sent rocks flying and tourists running. In the past century, there have been only small ones, says Paul Bedrosian. He's a geophysicist with the U.S. Geological Survey, USGS, in Lakewood, Colorado. But we know Yellowstone is capable of producing big earthquakes, he says, ones that are much bigger than the Antake quake. To learn what triggers them, researchers have been exploring the depths of Yellowstone Lake, on the park's eastern side. Hundreds of hot vents dot the lake's floor. The lake bed is also home to some of the world's largest hydrothermal vents. And on the lake's floor are hard, brittle domes that could one day explode. Hydrothermal vents are very, very dangerous, says Lisa Morgan. She's a volcanologist with the USGS in Denver, Colorado. For 25 years, he studied Yellowstone's largest explosion. And others, he said, could very well happen today. Scientists have been studying Yellowstone's hot springs and geysers since the late 1800s. But it wasn't until 1966 that they realized it had once been the site of a massive steam explosion. That summer, Patrick Muffler made his first visit to Pocket Basin. It's near Yellowstone's western edge. He was a young scientist with the USGS. He was traveling with his boss, Donald White, a USGS scientist who studied hot springs and geysers. Pocket Basin is a vast, bull-shaped meadow. A rocky ridge surrounds it on three sides. Hydrothermal pools and springs are scattered throughout the meadow. 
They scent the air with the sour smell of hydrochloric acid. The acid continually seeps out of the hot water bubbling up from below. As the two scientists explored the area, White noticed something he had seen before. In 1951, he had visited Lake City, California, to see something strange.